Good evening and welcome to Talk Back, the show where we ask tough, compelling questions from tough, compelling people. If newspaper columns were a community of nations, then our guest tonight would be a superpower. If criticism was a race, then he would be a forerunner. If reality was ever in doubt, then he would be its most ardent fact checker. Some call him just another critic. We call him the grand old man of Pakistani newspapers. Adishir Kawazji, welcome to Talk Back. You wrote last year in an article called Pack Your Bags that all is not well for the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. What do you think? All has never been well. Uh, where were you 40 years ago? I'm asking you. Well, I'm asking you. What do you think? Are things still straight up for Pakistan? It's completely screwed up. Screwed up from the time Jinnah went. That's somewhere in 1948. On the 13th of June, 1999, you wrote, many people ask how and when and who will make Nawaz Sharif fall. I say, have faith in natural justice. This was a little before uh, the coup of 99. So was the coup natural justice? It was in a way. Because the man, he's a good man, a horrible prime minister. Why are you such an ardent uh, supporter of uh, General Musharraf? Well, he's the best of the worst lot. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, that's supposed to mean that if I see four in front of me, and I have to choose who should lead me, I pick him, not because he's the best of the best lot, but he can be the best of the worst lot. But he's a military ruler. He may be a military ruler, but he's a man. In 2000, a uh, year after the coup, almost a year after the coup, you requested in one of your columns and you addressed General Musharraf and his generals and you requested that a 10-year ban be placed on everybody who had held office between 88 and 99. Is that fair and balanced journalism? It is. Because here we have, otherwise we keep on getting the same actors, the same fellows who who made us rotten as we are. Just now, who are we looking at? Just now, who's in the field? There is Musharraf, he's there. Then Nawaz Sharif is trying to come back. Benazir is trying to come back. And um, if that man, the peer of London, as I call him, if he can help it, he'd like to come back. You're referring to Altaf Hussain, but this is what you wrote in your column. You said it is imperative yes. that Musharraf and his generals ensure by ordinance or constitutional amendment yes. or otherwise yes. that neither of these two elected leaders nor any of the men and women yes. who acquiesced in the doings and were party to the enemies are allowed to hold any office of state yes. for that for at least the next 10 years. Yes. What, sort of, what sort of journalism is this? What sort of writing is this? You're saying you're placing a 10-year ban. You're asking the, the president yes. and his generals, very yes. interestingly, yes. to place a 10-year ban yes. against people who could or could not be found guilty in a court of law. They haven't been proven guilty so far. But no, you're, you're, you're just nobody, asking Nobody, to, to Nobody will a ever ban. be proved guilty in our courts. These fellows are, uh, you're not suggesting that these fellows are squeaky clean? They're as dirty as can be? When, but, when Benazir says that I am when you, when you, in one of the most widely read columns in the country, write Yes. that generals yes. should place a ban on yes. politicians yes. for a decade. What yes. sort of writing is that? What sort of writing is that? Is that is that fair and balanced journalism? You may not call it, but this is what I write. No, it's not about this is what it's about what I call it, sir. Is, is it fair and balanced according to you? Yes, of course. If these fellows have been shot out, they were two goes. How long do you want the same people to mess up the same country again and again? How long do you think a country can resist? How resilient can the people be? How resilient can a country be? How resilient can the environment be? To just bear these fellows, these useless rotters, again and again and again? But don't you think it's a little extreme that everybody, every man and woman between 88 and 99 should be disqualified from for running from politics those who run before not 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 you you could come in but isn't it the same is it, it aren't same? things exactly the same aren't no, we looking no. at the same characters well, emerge uh, but i am if you start entered politics i'd say welcome well thank you i, I take yes. that i take that as a compliment but yes, don't course. you think don't you think that the same characters have emerged 
the same characters have emerged because they haven't allowed anybody else to emerge. They've come, they've robbed. Then where has all your backing gone? Why are you backing this guy? Which guy? The general. Well, her, well, I'm backing him, as I say, he's the best of the worst lot under the circumstances. That is my considered opinion. And All right, what's, let's, what, let's what's switch. More, he hears that from me directly and doesn't send me to jail. All right, let's switch, let's switch gears. Uh, in 2001, you wrote in an article called The Terrorists Within. You wrote for military courts. You wrote for the parallel judicial system which had been set up, mil military tribunals which had been set up especially to deal with the terror in Karachi. How can you deal with terrorists otherwise? Do you not believe in reforming the civilian court system? I believe in refining, that is a possibility, but I don't believe in refining a terrorist. No, but you, you wrote and you said, unlike the civil anti-terrorist courts, they consist, and you're talking about military courts, of not one judge, but a panel of judges who, although not well versed in the technicalities of criminal law, were strongly imbued with a desire to do substantial justice. Yes. So you are saying that military, military judges who are not qualified to deal with the law can deal with the law just because their agenda is better. They want to deal with the law. They want to. How, how can you defend military you judges? You keep on giving the benefit of doubt, as our justice system does, and it, as it must, to all these fellows. Today, with a straight face, Benazir Sahiba, as she is called, I can say, I am coming back for the people. The people call me. The way she keeps on nodding her head like a cow's head. The democracy wants me. They are calling for me. And the people fall for that. But this is not about the people. I have all for military tribunals to deal with terrorism, yes. Well, a, well a, when a military court sits there, he's not a dodo, he's not meant to be a dodo. He may know a little bit less about judgments and justice and law, but he knows about terrorist law. No, that's not his job, is it? It's not the job of a, of a military officer to be a judge. No, you can make him a judge. He's everything today, everything else today, so why can't he be a judge? You don't think that the civil and courts can be reformed? Not possible. No, no. Not the civil court. The terrorists can't be reformed. It's a man we have now, men who think that they do right by not just killing themselves, but, but taking 30 people with them. This is their belief. We're talking to Adhashir Kawaji. You're watching Talk Back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Talk Back. We are talking to Ardashir Kawasji. Mr. Kawasji, you wrote in December 2001 in an article titled Resurrection that you wrote about President Musharraf and his army that he has the most disciplined and organized party of the land which gives him unrestrained backing. You are ratifying the claim that the general heads a political party, the army. As a journalist, don't you think that's a little irresponsible? The army was a party. The army will remain a party in this com in this country for a long time. You got to live with it. So you want to just live with it? I don't want to live with the army forever, but we'll have to live with it the way it it's going just now. Don't you think that's a rather unconstitutional claim that the army is a political party? What is constitutional and what is not constitutional? Who makes the constitution? The people do. People do. We are relying on the 1973 Constitution. Is that right? That's right. Right. You know, what was the life of that Constitution? Well, according to your writings, four hours. According to? Your writings. Yes. It's four hours. Four hours. So the man who made it knew that it was going to last for four hours. Bottom line is that man was elected by the people of Pakistan. You here are, are, are writing in a widely read column that, and you're not refuting the claim that the Pakistan army is a political party. Instead, you're encouraging that claim. Whether I encourage it or not, it will be a, it will be a party. The way this country is fixed just now, unless all these politicians behave themselves, there's no, no way. The politicians come in for making money. They're jobless otherwise. 
Don't you see? Just now with the job to come back again. There's money in the kitty to rob again. And you think that's why they're coming back? Well, All right, I, let's, I, focus, let's focus on General Mush Musharraf hmm. and your dealings with him. You have written um, a little uh, after the coup, in fact, just a month after, you wrote to General Musharraf and you said, to General Musharraf I say, make haste slowly, stand firm and excel. Yes. You, you told a military man, a military yeah. ruler, to yeah. stand firm and excel yes. at a time when you maybe should have urged yes. him to reform democracy and bring it back. So what did I say? What does stand firm mean? What does stand firm mean? You told him to stand firm and stay in office. S stand firm and excel, meaning stand firm and do the right thing. Now what was the right thing? Has he done the right thing? No, he's not. He's not clean up the mess at all. And why do you think that is? They all do it. They all look at their future. They all look at longevity. They all are, I, I should say, well, none of them is intelligent enough. None of them want to leave office. Everyone well, in retrospect, do you think you should have defended him because you did defend him a lot and you defended him along these lines? You said, does a uniform prevent a fit and trim man? You evidently liked the way his health was yes. from being a Democrat. Yes. So do you think a man in uniform, just because he's fit and trim, can be a Democrat? You're defending the president's uniform instead of discouraging it. Look, I'm saying that a general is a well-disciplined man. That was what I thought. Now, uh, I've lived on this earth for 81 years. I've seen many generals. And at one time, the general was a very fine man, a well-trained man, a disciplined man, a fellow who wouldn't do wrong by the people, by anybody for that matter. Compared to Nawaz Sharif, Nawaz Sharif would be a jungle, Benazri would be a jungle compared to a general. Now, if my idea was the general was that, don't blame me because I've known such generals. But the way you defended him, sir, the way you defended him, you... Um Firstly, you defended the situation about what brought about the coup. You said that we created the coup. We meaning the people of Pakistan, probably. You said we created a situation in which the chief of army staff and his men were forced to throw us out. You did not blame Nawaz Sharif. You said we, thus defending the coup. You also went on to explain in another column uh, in 99 called Jinnah's Pakistan that just because the general went to St. Pat's and FC College in Lahore, we can expect him to be a liberal man. Now, by the same uh, measure, George W. Bush went to Yale and Harvard. Benazir Bhutto went to Oxford and Harvard. Are we supposed to take someone's education, someone's resume? Education. Because this is how you were defending this man. Education counts. Education does count. But do you think this is a way of defending a military ruler? What's wrong in trusting? What's wrong in hoping? Where do you think I'd be without hope? So that's what you were doing. You were hoping and trusting. Yes. Every time a new guy comes, I hope and trust. But you were still hoping and trusting a couple of years later, while you, know, you responded to but a if he, enumeration. If he still is the best of the worst lot, what am I to do? You, you know, There's a bankruptcy in this country of people. Absolute bankruptcy. We keep on looking at who? We keep on looking at a man who, who more or less volunteered to go outside. And then he said, I made this terms, well, whatever he signed, he signed. And uh, I don't know where he'll end up. He hopes to come back after, after uh, Ramzan. And he, will come, he must come back, well, this is his home. But you kept on defending him further. You've defended him several times throughout the years. In March 01, when all his uh, Iqbal uh, Heather, well, the right. groovy Iqbal Heather, uh, listed down yes. his... his uh, his surrenders, yeah. as uh, he called it, on the announcement of the procedural changes in the blasphemy laws, continuing sep the separate electoral system, restoring the zakat groups or religious seminaries which impart military training, refused to apply to the Supreme Court for review of the interest verdict, failing to appeal against the Shariat Court, ruling on family laws, negotiating with extremist groups when they issued their frequent threats, encouraging the formation of militant organizations, amending the PCO. You know what you call this, do you remember? Well, you called it a glorious retreat. You compared it to Churchill's retreat yes. at Dunkirk. Yeah. You compared General Musharraf to yes. Winston Churchill. All right. I felt that he retreated and he had to retreat. For instance, uh, just now, when he took on the judges, the, uh, I wrote a column and said he should retreat. That was not my idea. I had followed the editor of the Times. 
and the British are good at politics, good at foreign affairs. In the first column after he attacked the general the way he did, they said good generals know when to retreat. You also called him the son of Jinnah after his address to the Sirat conference, 17 June 2001. I called him the son of Jinnah. You called him no, the son read of Jinnah. the whole column and I can still tell you why. You said reading the English transcript of General Pervez's words spoken from the heart at June 5th at this year's Sirat conference, it could be said that his son is born. For he has in many ways echoed the creed of Muhammad Ali Jinnah enunciated in August 11, 47, before the first Constituent Assembly of Pakistan. Correct. You called him the son of Jinnah just because yes. the man made a speech. Yes. The son is born. So that was he your doesn't... yardstick? So? You object to it, you object to it. Surely I'm, I'm, I can write what I like. I always um, argue with my editor. Do I have to argue with you? You're one of the readers. Take it for its, for its value. Ignore it. Am I, am I saying when I write that you, a reader of Dawn, read the damn thing and accept it as gospel? That is my view. I write under my name. I am responsible for my view at that particular time. Don't you think you should write responsibly? I, Calling uh, a military ruler just because he made a speech, the son of Jinnah, don't you think that's, a, that's going a tad bit too far? You may think so. 2002, in an article titled Poppycock, you said a military man or president may be, but so far he has remained benign and relatively tolerant. He has not had anyone murdered, mutilated, or manhandled. He has not filled up our jails with his op opponents. The press is free, is as free as it has ever been. He has managed to rid the political scene of at least a handful of our grand larcenists. No mean achievement this, with a little bit of luck and a deft hand on the tiller, we may refloat. Have we refloated? We may refloat. Have we refloated? No. Too much for this bucket to handle. You also claim that he's given us a free press. Has he given us a free press just recently? It's free press of press has never been free. He's got about 80 items on the air every day. It's never been as free as this as before, and he's standing it, so that's something worth it. Just this week, this organization's mm. reporter mm. was kidnapped, yes. psychologically tortured, and, why, and manhandled. And what have you done? Why haven't your man stood in the front of the Chief Justice of Pakistan the next day and said, here it is what happened, I rise, suspend your other work, since 99, 28 journalists in this country have been killed. 28. Countless kidnapped, countless manhandled, countless psychologically or physically tortured. And the, according to the PFUJ, the ratio goes up. So has he given us a free press? Have I what? Has he given us a free press? Because the ratio goes up. When was this written? 02? 02. 02, yes. He wasn't killing them. He wasn't catching people. I mean, he wouldn't have done this what he did to the Chief Justice, I said regrettably, but in, 19, in 2002. But this, as you tell us five times a day, absolute power corrupts. Finally, you've said, and you cite one quote from Jinnah very often, mm. you've, you cite one quote from Jinnah very often, that his prophecy was that every successive government in Pakistan will be worse than the other. Yes successively. Do you think the Musharraf government has been worse than the Bhutto and Nawaz Sharif governments? Yes. They were in a better position to do things, to get rid of the slot. We're talking to Adha Shirkawaji. You're watching Talk Back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Talk Back. We are with Adashir Kawaji. Adashir Kawaji, on the 21st of January 2001, in an article titled Shame, you said Kashmir and all that goes with it should be relegated to the back burner until we can pull ourselves up. Don't you think Kashmir is a vital security interest of this country? Don't you think that solving it should be a priority? Well, I've said that it should be on a back burner. 
And thank God, at least he's done that. After all these years, he stopped calling it the core issue, the core issue, the core issue. We were tired of listening to the speeches and everywhere core issue. And if you are going to stick to the core issue, we wouldn't have been where we are today. I think he's forgotten Kashmir, and rightly so. He's making friends with India, which we must do. He's talking of deterrence, which we must not do, because if I were in here, I wouldn't attack Pakistan. I wouldn't take over a country full of Nanga Bukhas, 170 million bigots, non-thinking people. Do you think this is an asset? You just answer me one question, which, which damn fool prime minister of a country or a neighboring country would like to attack us? Answer that question. I mean, who would like to take over this country? We've got no gold in the ground. When you open a tap, we get no water. We don't get oil. There's lots of copper, but by the time we get to the copper, the copper is more expensive than gold. We've got absolutely zero. People-wise, we are overcrowded. There are, according to your, your statistics, which you, which you spread every day, there are so many million homeless, so many million living below the poverty line, earning less than a dollar. This idiot of a prime minister, he calls it, uh, he calls development, what in his term, development means roads and high buildings. But don't you think Kashmir should be solved? rather than put on the back burner? How are we going to get Kashmir? Through whatever means necessary. And diplomacy so is probably your, the best means. That's your view. It's the view of the people. Which people? The people of Pakistan in a recent, in a recent survey yeah. held by Dawn News yes. and published in the Herald as well. Yes. Uh, there was a different survey there. Yes. Most people in Pakistan yes. want Kashmir solved. Peacefully. Solved Most power. people in India want Kashmir solved. Yes. Well, Peacefully. Peacefully, that means what? Here's what we have. Solve it. Do you think uh, if the, uh, both sides are doing it for the time being? I hope it lasts. You wrote on the 17th of October, 99, just a few days after the coup. You said, and you were talking about nuclear weapons. You said, we and the world should now feel safer knowing that the nuclear button is in his hands rather than those of the unpredictable, unworthy, unthinking politicians such as Democrats, Benazir Bhutto and Nawaz Sharif. Yes, I think he's a more responsible man. But many say that this man engineered Kargil, which almost bought, according to analysts, Pakistan and India close to a nuclear situation. This man was for all for Afghanistan, wasn't he? What did he do on the on the uh, uh, 10th of uh, on on 10 11? On 10 11, he made a 90 180 degree turn. He's capable of doing that, and he saved this country. So you he, thought, just, he just saved this country. Do you think any of his other idiots who were there, they could have done it? So you thought uh, that a military man, hmm. who many say hmm. engineered Kargil, was a better choice for controlling nuclear weapons yes. than Nawaz Sharif and Benazir Bhutto? Yes. Sounds strange, don't so, you think? So I can't help it if you think it's strange. I don't think it's strange and many people who read my column don't think it's strange. You have every right to think it's strange. How can I prevent you? You've also written for signing the CTBT, the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. Yes. Why are you for the signing? Don't you think that not signing the CTBT gives Pakistan nuclear parity with India? What nuclear parity? Are we going to nuke them to get nuked ourselves? Are we that stupid? Well, the, the basis of Pakistan not signing the CTBT is because Pakistan wants India to sign it. We Be want India to sign Because that gives Pakistan nuclear parity. This is neither of strategic the Strategic deterrence. So far, I don't think we've got any damn fool leader in this country who will press the button. I'm not saying we won't get one tomorrow. But do you know what new can do? And we'll be killing Muslims on the other side. We'll be killing people. And where will we? For God's sake. I mean, 
Hiroshima was long before your time, where you born. For Talk to Adash Kawaji, you're watching Talk Back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Talk Back. We are talking to the one and only Adashir Kawazji. Mr. Kawazji, about the Supreme Court, you've mentioned several times that you think the judiciary is corrupt. You've also mentioned, as recently as a couple of years ago, that people cannot make themselves heard to the judges. You've written, it also cannot be denied that the people are incapable of making the judges see what they do not wish to see, nor hear what they do not wish to hear. You're not a big fan of the judiciary? No. Why? I see, I observe. And um, some of the things we try to do um, is on the building front, where we are in the court. We, when I say we, I mean Sherry, it's an organization which I support. I'm not an office bearer there. It's for the environment. Government does all the wrong things. The government's corrupt. We try to fight. We can't make the judges see what we want them to see. What do you think of the so-called new judiciary, of the judiciary which reinstated the Chief Justice? As I say, the, the first thing that Jinnah said should happen is that we must have law and order so that the lives, property and the religious beliefs of the people are safe. We are trying to get there. This judge stood up. I mean, Nubusharaf had no business to send for him and make him sit in front of the three uh, uniformed people and bully him. He did wrong. He did very wrong. And the way he was treated afterwards, and the man stood up. I'm, I'm willing to beg any man who stands up for nonsense. But overall, you won't back the judiciary. I don't know how this judiciary will behave. You've also written about who is a good judge and who is not. You wrote in uh, 99, and this is what you said, the judiciary of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan lies demoralized and helpless to the extent that a writ petition was recently admitted seeking the unseating of a good high court judge on the ground that he is a non-Muslim. This despite the fact that out of three of the only unbending upright judges of Pakistan deserving honor without reservation, two were non-Muslims. How can you decide who's, who deserves honor and who doesn't? But who are you to object to my deciding? You are a reader. Disagree with me. Who are you to decide who deserves honor? Uh, do I say that I'm God? I say that I am Adilisha Kawazji, an ordinary man who writes a column once a week for exercising his brain. Your critics say that this column especially was just a defense of uh, the minorities in Pakistan and nothing else. It may be so. What's your problem? I'm not saying I'm God, for God's sake. I write, and when a columnist writes, that is his view. You read it, take it, or throw it in the basket. All right. Bhutto, mm. what do you think of him? Useless man. He was a friend of mine, but thoroughly useless. Megalomaniac. He's the man who started all the rot. It's said, it's written several, it's been written, it's been noted, it's been said about you that your digs at Bhutto are personal. They're not professional. Personal meaning what? That you will randomly include him in an article. Yes. Just to take a dig at him. Just to criticize him. Yeah, there's lots of other things to write. How many times do I mention him in one column, in how many columns? Well, I'm sure the statistics are out there. I'm yeah. sure the statistics are out there. Well, I haven't, I haven't, do I haven't. you have a personal grudge against Bhutto? No, no, the man's dead, gone, finished. For God's sake. Then why is it that avid readers of your column usually say that you randomly include him just to criticize him? You will throw him in a column, out of place, out of context, just to criticize him? That is their view. Is it a correct view? I don't think so. Nothing personal? Nothing personal. Okay. Oh, he was a friend of mine, the idiot. He put you in jail. 
Hmm? He put you in jail. So? He put all his friends in jail, except for Omar Qureshi and uh, Yunus Said. They got saved somehow. And you think that's all right? Oh, that is not all right. He was a megalomaniac. He was mad. Completely mad. The amount of the harm started with him. Can you imagine a man writing a constitution and knowing that in four hours he's going to mess it up? And doing that and fooling so many people. Asghar Khan is alive today. Ask him. He told Asghar, join me and we'll make a fool of these people for years to come. We'll keep on ruling forever and ever. Let's switch gears. Yes. Yeah, Several it. times, mm. education mm. has been the core of your writing. Yes. You've concentrated a lot on it. Yes. You have said several times that it is the central problem of Pakistan. Correct. What's the Kawasji plan for education? What's the Kawasji plan? Kawasji supports two Parsi schools and Kawasji has done its bit. We built a high school and donated to the people. And if every family, every, every business outfit builds and donates a high school, There'd be enough to have high schools in this world. So you're saying every family and every businessman should donate to a high school? Everybody who can should build. I mean, it's an old Parsi theory. Um, a Parsi normally, he builds a hospital, he builds a school, he builds a park, he does charity and he dies. Well, I've given more than I've taken. I've built a school, I've built two parks. I've got a hospital going. Well, and, what's, a, and what's the Kawasji plan for Karachi? Karachi, do as much good as I can for the people and go. I don't want to be any Long more. term, what's the plan? You've criticized what goes on in Karachi a lot. In fact, it's another central theme. Long term. Anywhere you go, first of all, you see dirt. You see muck. And every time I talk to this Nazim Pohabaga, the man who's come from Malaysia. He sends me statistics and he sends me discs and he sends me how much he has spent. Just by spending money the wrong way, you don't get it right. I can't, I can't move out of my house and I can't travel 20 feet without an open ditch, without facing an open ditch. Your detractors say that you have encroached upon property near your house. Let the dictator face me. Which is that property which I've encroached upon? To the south and the west corner. Oh, you mean the garden next to my house where I build, build I've grown trees? That is a plot meant for road widening. I'm glad you brought it up. That is a not a plot. The place next to my house is reserved for road widening. And I said that all that can happen there is the road can be widened. Till then, I have fenced it in and I'm growing trees. And the gate is open. Today you can go and live under the trees if you can. I'm sure we want to live under the trees. We're talking to Adashir Kawaji. You are watching Talk Back. Welcome back to Talk Back. We are with Adhishir Kawaji. Mr. Kawaji, you've been called a pessimist and not much else. Uh, well, it's said that you criticize and don't offer any real solutions. I have no solutions. Where I have a solution, I refer to them. But anyway, if I'm a pessimist, I'm a pessimist. What makes me a pessimist? Well, first of all, uh, let's, let's go back. At a recent gathering in Karachi, ironically, held by young people in your honor, you told those young people and uh, the question was uh, what will happen to Pakistan and what they should do. You told them to get out of the country. Yes, if they can. You think as no, a no, you see senior question. citizen, as a no, senior no, journalist, you think not, that's what you should do? It was not reported correctly. The guys say that um, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, and I say, as I see it, this country will disintegrate. And so another guy says, well, that means we should get out. Get out if you can. Uh, what's wrong with that? I did say it. So how am I a pessimist? So you're telling people to get out of the country. Why do you stay in this country? At 80, I'm ready for an old people's home. Do you want me to get into an old people's home? 
I'm ready to go, friend. The bags are packed up. Don't you think as a senior citizen, as a senior journalist, don't you think it's your job to impart wisdom on younger people instead of perhaps being pessimistic to a nihilistic degree? A nihilistic? I don't see anything good coming out. I had great hopes of this man when he came in. At least he was not a bigot. What do you think has gone wrong with this government? Which government? This government. Of the man you've backed for the past seven years? Well, first of all, he was a no look at his partners. Look at who has to side with. And that's out of necessity, I suppose. The peer of London and his company, the Mullahs and his company, Chaudhrys and his company. If you were to go back hmm. seven years, what changes would you make? What changes would you tell him to make? Do you think he compromised? Would you tell him that? According he to compromised, you? yes, he ran. One, one day he says, I'll, I'll do this to the blasphemy laws, and he retracted. He retracted many a time. And what would you tell him he should or shouldn't have done? He shouldn't have retracted. Well, first time. But very interestingly... If I, I did say that uh, uh, he done the right thing, right, he's a retreat. So when first he retreated, I thought, well, this was a retreat. He's gathering his forces. Second time he retreated, I thought the same thing. You don't know, my friend. Hope has to spring eternal, whether I'm a pessimist or an optimist. I always hope that things might improve. But practically speaking, no, there's no way. No way with 170 million people and multiplying as we do, with no schools, no education. No, no, it's... It, you, if you say, if you're trying to say that I'm saying that there's something very wrong with the people, it is. You asked a question that you were Managing Director of the Pakistan Tourism Development Corporation way back in 1973. <laughs> yeah. And your response was, what could I tell the world? Come and pray. Is yeah. that the only thing people can do in Pakistan? No, climb mountains. What does he come here for? First of all, first of all, he wants to go back alive. Can I guarantee him that? If a guest of mine writes, I'm going to visit Pasita, is it safe? Can I say it is? Whoever comes here comes at his own cost, risk and cost. There's nothing else to add for Pakistan. I'm just praying. Do you think I'm happy saying so? Are you? I'm not. But if I face reality, do you mind? So that's reality? That's reality as far as I'm concerned. What do you think of the current situation right now as far as the political deal is concerned? Put the word deal, use the word deal. You think of cards one way or another, don't you? I mean, we deal with cards, we deal cards. But today, hmm. if you were to give a bottom line on the deal, hmm. what would you take it? What's the deal? For making deal with who? Evidently with Benazir Bhutto. Well, he's a robber and a thief. So what does that make uh, your best of the worst man? He's doing wrong. You just can't, you think anybody can, I mean, Benarizi Bhutto is called her husband, Nensil Mandela. Where do we go from there? We haven't seen the end of them. Young Bilal is going to Oxford, I'm told. Let's hope he learns something better. Do you think that anybody here can say with logic and reason what's going to happen tomorrow? I'm not a soothsayer. I don't, uh, I'm not a peer. I don't have Peer Pagaro's capacity to make statements. But you can't go on logic or reason. Mercurial is the, is the best term you can use for our chaps. What's the Kawasi plan for Pakistan? Let there be trade, let there be business, let the resources be utilized properly. Not kill animals and so many animals. Be, be kind to animals, be kind to women, not get bigoted. That was a hope. Adhishir Kawaji, a pleasure and a privilege. My pleasure. That was Adhishir Kawaji. Thanks for watching Talk Back this week. Email us at talkback at dawnnews.tv. Your feedback is important to us. That's it from me, Vijayat Saeed Khan, and the rest of the Talk Back team. Have a good night.